forever. Dog. <laughs> Well, here we are. Another incredible week. Down the Hatch. That's the new podcast title. It's called Down the Hatch. <laughs> Wait, what was the name, Dan, of the... Oh, Dan and I came up with... Um, and I'm going to do a, a formal introduction momentarily. But Dan Acton, who's here with me, Dan actually may be here for the whole two episodes this week because our guest <laughs> wordlessly canceled so my guest who i actually adore i won't say his name who i love just didn't show up so dan may just have to fill in the shoes of our guest this week or we'll get someone else last minute but anyway uh we were texting um yesterday and uh about stuff in our lives and dan suggested that we have a secret podcast called dan tell everyone what would it be called unpodcastable Unpodcastable. Unpodcastable. Uh, but that is not the name of this podcast. Hi, everybody. It's Midnight Snack. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm in a great mood, and I'll tell you why. I feel like this week I've just heard from a lot of people who have reached out, random people in the business. I don't want to name any names, but who've been like, oh, yeah, you don't know me, but I listen to your podcast. Like people who have real jobs. And I'm like, oh, what? That's so nice. So nice. No, I go, you... Why would you do that? No, I'm like, you listen to the <laughs> podcast and they're like, yeah, we, I love midnight snack. And I'm, it just made me feel really good. It's really nice to hear that people listen. Cause I, I think we forget. Yeah. I, I forget all the time. <laughs> Dan forgets all the time. I kind of, can I be honest with you? I almost want to run off and put my off white cream colored knit sweater on so that we match. Like in a sort of, should I run and do that? Um, First of all, hi, it's Midnight Snack. This is Michelle Collins. Um, It's literally in the other room. Dan, do you want to talk for 20 seconds? I'm going to grab it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Hey, all you snackers out there. Um, (laughs) Michelle is going to match me. I'm in a Knives Out. uh, Oh, she has the same sweater. Well, it's a common sweater, I guess. I forget. (laughs) We look great. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we that's did. funny. We literally look like Will Ferrell and Rachel Dratch right now. We're like, yeah. we look like, um, <laughs> what was the sketch where they did the NPR ladies? We're both wearing creamy cable knit <laughs> goodness. I've gotten really into off white lately. It's a color that I never leaned into for, you know, you can tell that you're successful when you can start purchasing off white without panicking. Oh, yeah, that you're not gonna. I actually have two of these sweaters. <laughs> I have an older one that I like that that's my like uh you know scratch sweater if I'm at a like painting dinner or something. I was gonna yeah. say like making wine in the house. Um yeah. this I got this when I was in London and funny story that you say you have two because I actually loved it so much that I bought two. And then when that's I got funny. back to New York, I and it's like a heavy sweater. And when I got back to New York, um I could I didn't have room. <laughs> it's like, wait, there's such <laughs> bulky sweaters. So I gave the other one, which I had worn to my series producer, Sierra got it. Um, but let me also add that I got like a big size because I'm like, I want it to be like oversized and it's a little yeah. bit too oversized. So I'm not crazy about it. Mine's tight in the armpit. They're hard to fit. This is like a good. Oh, mine's very, um, very loose in the armpit. Well, folk, welcome to Midnight Snack. It's a all new episode called Loose in the Armpit. And we are just having the best time. I'm Michelle Collins. What was that? A 90 minute long intro? Literally four minutes of me putting a sweater on. You won't get that anywhere else. Not for free. I'll tell you that. Dan Acton is here with me. Um, we are live in our apartments uh, in the tri-state area. I don't like to be too specific for our stalkers out there. And... Um, <laughs> It's not even which three states. It's like... <laughs> no, I'm not telling you. Um, we, uh, I mean, a lot happened this week, I feel. I have a really exciting story because we're releasing this on Tuesday. So technically I can tell everybody about um, Watch What Happens Live, which I recorded. This is going to be hard for people. This is a memento moment for everybody. And of course, I'm here yeah. with Dan Acton in case I didn't say Dan's name. We recorded the episode Wednesday of this week. Now, for those listening, it's now Friday where the episode is airing next Monday, which if for listeners, that will mean yesterday, if you're listening to this on Tuesday <laughs> and now we're releasing this Tuesday. Does that, did that make sense? I think it makes sense. Yeah. When you were saying that you mentioned that you were on, I was like, it's watch what happens live. I assumed it was live. People but, do uh, assume it's live, but sometimes he, listen, Andy Cohen 
is the absolute hardest working man in showbiz. I would, um, I'm actually going to go out on a limb, especially now and say harder working than Ryan Seacrest. I think, I, I think Andy yeah. genuinely hosts his serious show. You know, I, I'm so far up his ass. I'm the Pence to Andy's Trump. Like I can't, <laughs> I couldn't, I'm the Lindsey Graham to Andy. So I could not crawl any further up Andy Cohen's ass. There's no room for me. I mean, genuinely it's like an uh, Ace Ventura too. I'm just sticking my little head out waving. <laughs> but um but no but he really works hard he has a series show he's all he, with his books he is a little boy now he does this show so they do pre-tape a couple not to ruin the magic funny enough i actually closed my blinds so that people thought it was nighttime <laughs> i'm so good i'm so so good day too it was during the day the sun was up it's oh, like hard funny. i know and it was funny because i poured a glass of wine for myself to make it feel like nighttime and then i was like it's three o'clock in the afternoon and i'm doing this but uh, a very exciting moment which i can now share two things that really i, I want to talk about a little bit so first of all i had done the show once before uh years and years ago when i was on the view so like mm, five or six years ago i can't remember exactly when and I was obviously so excited. And I had told friends of mine in LA who were like, oh, you should bartend and watch what happens. And I remember saying to them, and this is why I do sort of believe in like um, the secret and visualization. I said, if I'm going to go on watch what happens live, I'm not bartending. And there's no shame in bartending. But I said, I want to go on as a seated guest. Like I, I have to. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. very full. And they, I think, had asked me to bartend once. And I was like, oops, can't. And so uh, they had me on. But they had me on with Jax. <laughs> fucking Jax from Vanderpump Rules was the other guest. Now, Dan, oh, I feel funny. like you don't know Vanderpump. Not at all. Yeah. Well, Jax, <laughs> um, listen, you know, he's sort of like, uh, how do I put this? There are certain people, I call them Beetlejuice people, where if you say their name more than three times, <laughs> they start trolling you on Twitter. Oh, and okay. basically, he falls into that category. There's another J name who actually is mentioned was mentioned on the episode last night, who's also, she's a Beetlejuice name. Uh, God, there are a lot. Uh, Ann Coulter is a great Beetlejuice name. Okay. Yeah, Ann yeah, will yeah. come for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're just people kind who... kind of a candy man, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Candy Coulter. <laughs> doesn't make sense um sure you know let me just go with it i mean by the way i'm boiling hot i have to take the sweater off in like two seconds but <laughs> but to be on with Jax, for those who don't know Jax from vanderpump he is like a villain he's honestly probably i don't want to get sued by him because that's just exactly who he is but he's just let's put it this way we were not cut from the same cloth Jax and i he's just not in the same factory not in the same developing nation we were sold <laughs> he's forever 21 i'm zara you got it like there's just we're different you get the cloth analogy here are totally. we following yeah so they had me, and I remember the first time I did it, Dan. Oh my fucking lord! I wore a dress. You know, for those who've never been on TV. Meanwhile, we have no listeners now. I'm like, hello, <laughs> <laughs> hello. Um, everyone's it's like, like when, when's the when's the sweater talk starting back? <laughs> That's yeah, can you tell us more about minutes. your sweater, please, for yeah. God's sake? <laughs> no, but I remember, it's like there's this pressure. I remember being under so much pressure because, again, like all I care about is like making Andy happy. So I was like, OK, I really want to look pretty on it. And it's funny because at the time, I'm sure like always I was like, oh, I feel fat. And now I look back and I'm like, where have all the flowers gone? <laughs> you know, yeah. my old body. <laughs> but in the meantime, so um. <laughs> So I wore this dress from ASOS. It was so fucking ugly. I mean, truly. And then I kept it for a long time after because I was like, oh, that's my watch. What happens dress? I should have. You know what I mean? It was so right, hideous. Right. It had this. I think even my mom was just like, <laughs> you know, listen, we all grow. We all grow she's up. Like adjust, she's like adjusting the set. <laughs> Right now, it's all about the small things we can do for ourselves, like going for a walk, cooking our favorite meal, and watching our favorite show. Well, I have another small, impactful change for you to add to that list, and that's taking your daily vitamin with Care Of. Care Of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you long term. Care Of's in depth five minute online quiz asks you questions about your diet, lifestyle, and health concerns to help address your specific wellness goals. When I took this super easy quiz, I mentioned that I wanted to focus on sleep my skin and imagine this stress levels 
in this year? Who could have thought? And I found the suggestions they gave me in return were not overwhelming at all. I know I've walked into the vitamin aisle just fully overwhelmed, not anymore. And that's because Care Of is transparent about the research and sourcing behind each one of their products. And you can follow Care Of's expert recommendations or adjust your pack at any time. What you decide to order is completely up to you. So why not get a personally tailored approach to your unique health needs? And yes, obviously, I have an offer for you to do just that. You're going to get 50% off of your first Care Care of order, just go to takecareof.com and enter the code Midnight Snack 50. Again, for 50% off of your very first care of order, just go to takecareof.com and enter the code Midnight Snack 50. Hey friends, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're missing out on a lot, especially my parents' beautiful cat. Minky. You know, uh, Minky, she's my chubby orange angel. I never knew love until I met Minky. But what the family isn't as fond of is the odors that sometimes come out of Minky's litter box because she's um, an organism just like all of us. And, you know, they've tried everything and eventually they found Pretty Litter. You guys, Pretty Litter is kitty litter reinvented. Do you think I do ads for just any kitty litter? Of course not. Unlike traditional litter, Pretty Litter's super light crystals trap odor and release moisture, resulting in dry, low-maintenance litter that doesn't smell. Plus, Pretty Litter is virtually dust-free because it's manufactured with a specialized de-dusting process. I think I could use a little bit of that. (laughs) That's right, less dust and no fuss. Pretty Litter arrives safely at my parents' door in a small lightweight bag that lasts up to a month. And by getting litter bags auto-shipped, they don't have to deal with last-minute trips to the store. Plus, the shipping is free. But even more incredible than all of that, here's why Pretty Litter is a pet parent's hero. It's a health indicator. Pretty Litter monitors your cat's health by changing colors when it detects potential underlying issues. Have you ever heard of a kitty litter doing that? I mean, can I get some of this litter for my urine? It's so innovative and incredibly helpful. So get the world's smartest litter without leaving home by visiting prettylitter.com and using the promo code Midnight Snack for 20% off of your first order. That's prettylitter.com, promo code Midnight Snack for 20% off. Prettylitter.com, promo code Midnight Snack. Greetings, mortals. I am the Lord thy God. King of the universe, creator of space. We don't need the vocal effects. Can we lose that? That my actual voice is fine. Okay, great. Hello, I am the Lord thy God, King of the universe, creator of space and time, or as I prefer to be known these days, at the Tweet of God. For over a decade, I've entertained my over 6.2 million followers with my wit, misanthropy, and off-stated regret I created any and all of you. Well, now I'm taking my hilarious blend of contempt and disgust from the Twitterverse to the podcast. Verse, with my new show, the predictably named Godcast, premiering Wednesday, January 27th on Forever Dog. On Godcast, I'll be opening up my infinite mind about everything from politics to the nature of reality to this week's point spreads to how much longer I'll save the queen to that weird new growth on your neck. I'll answer prayers, take spiritual phone calls, surprise people with live eternal damnations, justify the platypus, and even explain the Bible, which is not at all easy to do. Plus, every episode, I'll be interviewing a guest, either alive, like Stephen Colbert, Zoe Deschanel, and Lin-Manuel Miranda, or dead, like Moses, Amelia Earhart, and Lizzie Borden. Joining me for it all will be my adorable sidekick, the 18-34 to demo-appealing Joan of Arc. Hi, God. Hi, Joe. Are you excited for the show? Sure am. Hey, could you put me out now? Not now. Maybe soon. (laughs) Sounds great. New episodes of Godcast will premiere every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you can, and will, go to hell. Godcast, from the creator of At The Tweet Of God, and everything else. A 60s mod. I mean, if you care enough, you can go on (laughs) Getty and Google me and Jax. This glitter, it was actually, oh my God, it was so fucking ugly. I'll find a picture. Maybe I'll do in my Instagram stories, like a throwback after this episode comes out to show people. (laughs) I mean, my jawline is killing it. Like it is so skinny. And then I just look, I don't know what I was doing. I feel like, I don't know, makeup wise, hair wise. I don't know what my look was maybe I didn't know what I like to look like then this was only five years ago it's not like when I was 20 (laughs) but I'm like I for example I think my hair now looks great like I'm feeling my haircut right now but long story short 
such a selfish episode already. Let me just have this, please. Let me I, let me have this, okay? <laughs> Listener, let me have this day to rehash, have an Al Bundy moment with all of you. Long story short, <laughs> I was not funny on the episode at all. And I remember that um, I made one funny joke that did have Andy laughing. I was also very nervous. I really was. Like, Great. thinking back, I was. Yeah. It was all about how he's a villain. So, you know, it's hard to be like bubbly and funny when you're there with this like fucking cholera. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Google that. I'm not in the mood. But anyway, <laughs> I think I made some joke about him having Ebola, like that I would want to wear protection, <laughs> not for STDs, uh -huh. but from Ebola or something like that. Okay. Okay. Big okay. Ebola joke. Got a huge laugh. Great. Yeah. So funny. We can really laugh about Ebola now, can't we? <laughs> like, I'm joking, <laughs> listener. Years pass. I never went back on the show. I really had nothing to promote. You know, to be fair, you go on the show if you're like in his inner circle or if you have something to promote. Well, right. I was supposed to go on. See, this is a little inside info. I told you the story is going somewhere. Hello. No one's, no one's listening. Last March, when Corona first broke, you know, I was with Andy Cohen and John Hill the night that Tom Hanks got COVID. And uh, they asked me to do Watch What Happens that following Monday in studio because uh, I guess the guest who was coming in from L.A., no one could fly. People were it was like that was like lockdown, like people were afraid. Right. So I thought, right. oh, my God, this is so incredible. Like I get to go back on watch what happens. So of course I'm like, for me, it's like, I'm going to rewrite that fucking mod glitter dress. I'm going to look like a million fucking bucks. I'm going to get, you know what I mean? I'm going to be so funny. Cause I had performed in front of Andy that night and I was really funny and I could see that he was like, Oh, she's funny. Cause he didn't know, you know, it was just a great night for me. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Sunday comes night before I'm supposed to go on. This was, I'll tell you the date. It was, I think March 12th or 13th. I'll look exactly. No one cares. Ooh. No one cares. No, but I got to look right around. Up. Cause lockdown was what the 17th or something it was march i was supposed to be on march 16th so on march 15th i get an email andy has covid uh, so andy cohen got sick and so they were like we'll definitely have you back don't worry about it and i was like why would i worry about it <laughs> <laughs> why on what planet would i ever literally worry about this like of yeah, course yeah. i'm not worried you know <laughs> <laughs> well, cut to nine months later. They never asked me back, but now they're doing the show. Right. He's in studio, but they're doing the show via Skype, you know? Right, right. So they did have me back with my dear love friend, Jerry O'Connell, who, oh, you know what? Oh, yeah. Jerry's the best. Jerry's just the best. First of all, he still looks so cute. He's such a love. Like, he's just like a good person. You know, he really, yeah. I'll say this about Jerry. I do believe he's always rooted for me and vice versa, of course. And I just adore him. Yeah, you guys are great together, too. Yeah, well, we kind of, you know, it's funny. He's so high energy that he actually makes me seem low energy. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> he's so big that I yeah. almost feel like Daria next to him a little bit because he's so like, <laughs> nying, nying, you know, big. Um, anyway, I turned quite the look at I mean, now that this is being released the day after, I got this dress at Fashion Nova for 30 bucks. Dan, I sent you the photo, which I'll post on Instagram. But uh, that red dress, I didn't send it to you. Uh, no, it's not coming over yet. <laughs> Wait, really? I thought I sent it to you. I don't think so. Oh, shit. Well, get get ready to... Uh, uh, Dan, I did send you this picture. The fact that you don't remember it hurts. Wait, what? I just resent you, too. I kind of want to okay. send it to Tracy, too, and have Tracy weigh in. Hey, Trace. Oh, yeah. I totally... Yeah, I know this. Hey, Trace. Can I send you the dress? Because Dan's not giving me the um, the attention I need right now, you and I think you will. look amazing. What a silhouette. Look at that. It's good, right? Trace, wow. Trace, come on. I mean, I look fucking hot for real. And you know, yeah, I don't say that shit. Like, yeah, it's very, uh, what okay. you call it? yeah, it's like kind of revealing. Like, it's revealing. Okay, Tracy, you ready? I'm texting yeah. you. Everyone, welcome our producer, Tracy. Um, can I, Hello. Trace, can I share with people, Tracy, what we did before the show started today? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Tracy today because our guest uh, in the vaguest terms because our guest um just didn't show up which again I'm not going to hold against him personally but um he still hasn't texted me not the point uh Tracy and I ended up just bonding for about an hour before Dan got here and I have to say it was more fun than doing the podcast I really enjoyed talking to you yeah I know we had a really fun time it was just we a really good did no, we really had fun. We got to know each other. We opened up to each other. We laughed. We felt it was like free therapy, but in really like just what the doctor ordered. So Tracy, shout out to you. I know. Thank you. Since we've never met each other in person, which is shocking. Um, Wait, is that true? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, what? Isn't that shocking? Yes. Yeah. Should we've we? Never met, we've never met each other. Why don't we wait for a sunny day and go get drinks? my house. That's yeah. And a sunny day. Sunny day. Wait, you've not left I, your house ever? 
like since no, this- I'm like I'm saying I'm saying in this cold, like in oh, yeah. like two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Tracy, edit all that bonding between us out. Yeah. I'm going to send you the. <laughs> hey, Trace, can you just cut all that bonding out? Um, here, look, I'm sending you the dress. So this is what Tracy. This dress, by the way, shout out to Fashion Nova. <gasps> Talk to me. Oh my God! Can I say I did just Google the dress that you wore the last time because I I needed to know what you were talking about. This dress is ten times better. Don't even insult me by putting that first dress in the same bucket as the red dress. Like, don't insult me. This is a different caliber. Can I say something and I don't think you'll get offended? I, by the way, that dress. That's what everybody <laughs> says before. Can I just wait? Can I quickly, quick, quick, quick? Can I just say something without you getting offended? You looked like a fucking monster. No, in that no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I what? think this. I just think that dress was more of like a. Uh, like a business cash. And this is oh, a watch yeah. what happens. Oh, see, do you know what I mean? Can I tell you though, just to defend myself, I hear where you're coming from. That other dress in person was covered encrusted in glitter. So I actually thought that it was a fun. And also the vibe of the set at watch what happens is very mod. Like, you know, it's yeah. very like mm-hmm. Jonathan yeah. Adlery. So I felt like that other yeah. dress kind of fit in with the energy of the set, not realizing that it didn't fit in with my physical energy or my personality. Mm. But how good do I look in this dress? This dress I have to tell you something took five years off my life and I needed it. I'll tell you that. This should be like, if you have, if there was a dating profile to me, this is a dress and I don't know dating profiles, but this, this, this to me would be a dress. Can I, I, can I compliment myself? Can I compliment myself? I actually think this picture is too hot for dating profiles because it sets the expectation. Dan's laughing. Dan, Dan, way in Dan Acton. I think it sets the expectation so high because I will probably never look this good again. Um, And I really cleansed. Like I really wasn't eating a lot before Wednesday. I don't want men to think that I will. I'm going to show up on the first day like this because it's not happening. It's a a very like no strings attached uh, kind of. (laughs) <laughs> profile. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's it's fair. like yeah, I get paid yeah. by I, the I've, hour. I've never been on a dating app. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, Tracy, I'm glad we okay. could bring you in to brag that Tracy's never been on a dating mm-hmm. app. Tracy, you can sign out. Now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Bye. Hello, Forever Dog listeners. I'm Allison Raskin. And I'm Gabby Dunn. And we host the podcast Just Between Us, which is available right here, right now on Forever Dog. Just Between Us is a variety show that features listener questions, in-depth interviews, and topical topics. We also play a game show called Hypotheticals. I could try to explain it to you, but the rules keep changing. I make the rules. And I always lose. We're also joined each week by incredible guests, including disability activist Alice Wong, Planned Parenthood's Alexis McGill-Johnson, best-selling author and therapist Lori Gottlieb, and primatologist Kate Gilmore. New episodes of Just Between Us drop every Wednesday. So while you're listening to this podcast, search for Just Between Us with Allison Raskin and Gabby Dunn. Hit that subscribe button and check us out. Please. Please. (laughs) Just Between Us. This is Tracy. Ready? She goes, now, I don't know if you're on these apps, but if I, you should put, and I go, well, Tracy, I actually think it's like a bit forward to put this like really sexy picture. And she goes, well, you know, you know, I've never been on one. Anyway. Okay. So Dan, so that's my story, but I have one last thing to say, but Dan, any, anything to pipe in about? I'm so sorry. I think it's good to have somebody on the show that can say something about your outfits or dresses other than like the it's pretty, which is my usual like response well your actual <laughs> response just let me remind people what happened three minutes ago was you never sent it to me and then i literally had sent it to you <laughs> <laughs> so really made an impression on my co-host um <laughs> i mean i remember the sh- the shrek slippers much, much more <laughs> i'm sorry say it again the what i remember the shrek slippers much more that you sent over wait a minute w- dan what shrek slippers no, Dan, tell everybody what what Shrek slippers are you talking about? Uh, you said I just bought these yesterday. Uh, two big, fluffy, plush slippers that look like donkey from uh, <laughs> Shrek. So I did With a this, fan. Like, Go on, this idiotic grin <laughs> on both their faces. <laughs> These like eyes that don't really go in the same direction. No, they're um, they're <laughs> such poor quality. I've not gotten them yet. A fan DM'd me. You know that I have really I have really carved a name for myself in the Shrekiverse, where when people see anything <laughs> Shrek related, they're like, "We gotta let Mish know." And so a fan literally <laughs> that's such a good move <laughs> to get into there. <laughs> that was really it's savvy. True. 
by the way, and you know what's funny is I think people think that I'm I'm doing it ironically because it's like a funny thing to be obsessed with. Literally, Not Shrek true. was on. I want to say Shrek was on like two nights ago, and I watched like the first forty minutes, and then had to go do something, and I DVR'd it. <laughs> I've seen it a hundred times. Anyway, I fucking love Shrek. No, because we were talking on the phone. I was, I was like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, oh, nothing's on TV. And, she's, and you were like, oh, well, Shrek's on. So, <laughs> as if like, like, you idiot. Turn on TBS. It started <laughs> no, it's true. Dan was like, there's nothing to watch. Yeah. I'm like, um, okay. TVguy.com over here. Shrek <laughs> is literally on channel eight, you fool. Turn it on. <laughs> Wait, no, so a fan sent me those Shrek slippers because they know that I'm obsessed. And um, and I clicked on it. And honestly, people send me a lot of Shrek stuff. And I'm like, always like, I, I'll i be real with you. 99% of the time, I'm just like, oh, like, it's kind of annoying. I'm not just, you know, because it's usually stuff I've seen or, you know, I'm never, I've never, my brain has rarely been blown by some Shrek news that I've not already seen, right? But it's nice that people think about me. Anyway, she sends you slippers. So I do click. And it takes me to an Amazon link. They were 20 bucks. So I click on my size. I'm a lady size 11 for all those wiki feet folk out there. Lady size US 11. I click on it. Dan, there was one pair left in my size. It said last one. It was 20 bucks. in different sizes? <laughs> like they just look like. <laughs> like big plush like holes. Like huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, yeah, okay. but the length of the hole changes. So my whole length was 10.5 <laughs> to 12.5 ladies. Hole. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, and I did, I, you know what it was? I sent them to my mom. Cause my mom also fucking loves donkeys so much. And I go, ma, should I get these? And I'm not kidding you within, I actually almost want to read it, but it's going to take me a minute without <laughs> waiting a beat. She goes, uh, without a doubt, run, don't walk. Cause I believe what she said. <laughs> so, I did buy them. I think they're coming on the 31st of January. So I'll post a photo of it. Thank you to the fan who sent them to me. <laughs> here's the weirdest part so i'm sitting here on the zoom with andy and jerry and you know jerry showed up first he jerry was like in a cut off you know he can basically wear whatever he wants because he's jerry and he's so cute blah 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 and i'm in this red fashion nova dress that i i've been waiting for the right moment to wear it you know you have things like that like and there's so few chances now to like really look hot like you know or really get a look together and i thought you know i was either that or this black dress that i have that i also posted on instagram I mean, it just fucking killed it. I was like, wow. It just, I can't explain it. I feel like it was waiting to be seen on that show. Do you know what I mean? It really made me feel yeah. good. So we started. And do you know, as I'm wearing this fancy dress, I did my own hair and makeup. I was very proud of the job I did. How does Andy Cohen to millions of Bravo viewers introduce me? <laughs> how does he, and, and those who have seen it know this, but it, Dan doesn't know. So this is a fresh, how was I introduced on Watch What Happens Live? You ready? Yeah. Something along the lines of, from pig couches to Shrek jackets, <laughs> this gal's got it all, or something like that. It just, <laughs> all I know is, and I'm there like, done. I'm there like, net gala. You know, I'm, I'm so done up. I'm so, I want to look so beautiful. I'm like, I just want to be pretty. I don't care about being funny. Like, make me pretty on the show. And he goes, from pig couches to Shrek jackets. And I'm like, is that the name of my memoir? Like, from pig couches to Shrek jackets? I mean, and then I was like, wow, Andy, like, obviously his producers really, like, knew me. Because why? how would they yeah. know about Shrek jacket? That's something I only talk about in my live show, basically, you know? Yeah, that's funny. Oh, my fucking God. You're like a glamorous hoarder of, like, just, like, nonsense, like, plush, like, garbage. I'm, like, I'm going to let that one sit a little bit. That Dan just called me a glamorous hoarder of plush garbage. I literally, I literally thought that the Zoom had frozen. Like, <laughs> no, I had. The Zoom was like, working yeah, 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 fine. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And so to make a long story short, I had a great time. Um, Jerry was so funny. What's really exciting is they did um, they did a game called something along the lines of, is he a midnight snack? And I had to pick between like the house husbands of who's like a bigger snack, which was very cool that's of them fun. to plug yeah. the podcast like that. Um, awesome. I will say that doing Zoom shows is so hard because there was a delay of about three seconds. So what I was like right now, I'm seeing myself live. So. Right. But there I would see what happened three seconds ago. So the camera would cut to me. I wouldn't know that I was on camera. And because I'm just inherently 
nitpicky and annoying, I would be like fixing my hair or like rubbing my lips together or primping, you know, because I really uh, it's just hard when you're doing something at home by yourself. You have nobody watching you. You know what I mean? It's like you want to yeah, look good yeah, or whatever yeah. else. So the delay was also a bit hard with like making jokes. But uh, I think first segment, it was a little stiff. And then I feel like second and third, I really niched out. So I'm very pleased. So anyway, big thank you to Andy Cohen. Andy, I adore you. And Jerry, I adore you. And it was really fun. I'm glad I did it. Uh, it's so much fun. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Oh, my God. From pig couches to Shrek jackets. I feel like maybe that's <laughs> the name of the episode. How could it be anything else? Loose armpits with that. Um Anywho, wait a minute. I just got a text from Greg Bennett. Um, can I can I actually um, wait? I'm recording the pod. Can I call you to discuss this? Hold on. Greg Bennett just sent me a text. Greg is funny enough from Housewives. He said yes. I'm just before I call him. Well, actually, let's call Greg. So Greg was uh, we all love Greg Bennett. He was um, one of the friends, Alfie Manzo's friend on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Let's get Greg on the line. This is actually hilarious. Greg just sent me a text that just ties into something that happened this week. Hello. Greg Bennett, I cannot Hi. believe that we got you on the pod. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Legend. How are you? Greggy, I'm so good. And your timing genuinely could not be any better. First of all, I miss you so dearly. How are you? How's New Jersey? Fill us in. Thriving. Jersey City is great. We moved to a two-bedroom. We have more space. We're loving it. Um, how are you? I miss you so much. I miss you too. And by the way, thanks again for the invite over because um, he's never invited me been, over. You have an open invite. <laughs> the pool is ready for you. The hot tub's open all winter. Come whenever you want. Okay, I'm not for joking. Sure. You know that I get a car once a week and I go to Jersey literally once a week. <laughs> well, get over here. Okay, well, I need a formal invite. Anyway, <laughs> um, okay, now all of you have heard it. Uh, Greggy, you just sent me a text. I'm here with my friend Dan Acton. I know you can't hear Dan because of the way this is set up, but can you just tell everybody what your text said? Yeah, I said, do you remember when we rode in the elevator with Cicely Tyson at the Standard Hotel? And wow. I have to be honest with you, I don't. And I remember seeing her because I've okay. seen her in person before. And I remember thinking she was the height and weight of like a newborn kitten. Like she was, she was tiny. So tiny. It was an it was a moment for sure. It was that what was that movie that Tyler was a Tyler Perry movie that we went to see? That sounds about uh, right. The, with the with the girl who was in the bottom of the sea at the end. Uh, what's her name from Empire? Oh, Taraji. Uh, Taraji, yes. And oh my God, the, yes. Acrimony, it was what it was called. It what was, was it called? Acrimony. Yes. By the way, it was did, a wild screen. Did we not actually love <laughs> Tyler Perry's Acrimony? Or what? I walked out being like, that was great. It was amazing. Yeah. It, that was a, that's a whole other podcast. But she was there and she showed up at that after party at the Standard and we just got shuffled into an elevator with her up to the roof. Can I just say something to you? You know, I have a horrible memory. I, I really genuinely, and I think as I age, it's actually getting worse almost to a problematic degree. The fact that I don't remember riding in an elevator with Cicely Tyson <laughs> makes me feel extremely dead inside it actually makes me feel like i actually need to like have like a zoom therapy session to like figure my issues out i don't you might, you might need to start doing sudoku or something and keep your mind <laughs> not sudoku <laughs> <laughs> i'll kill him um no i remember i heard a story which i can't repeat here i just heard i remember when i when i saw the horrible news that she passed um i remember hearing a story about something with her at a sardis and i don't remember the details about it but it was like some real new york broadway stuff like I think she had like a fight with someone at Sardi's and it was really funny about her picture. I could be making all of this up because again, my memory is completely false, but um, did she talk to us? Did we say anything to her or were we just lording over her physically? We, you and I were like Hagrid and Madame Maxim from Harry Potter, <laughs> just giants. <laughs> How dare you call me Hagrid? No, I'm kidding. Go on. <laughs> I was Hagrid. You were the obvious. <laughs> and we were just there and she must have looked like our little daughter i mean she was teensy I, she was silent it, i mean the whole elevator was just like in awe of her and being in her presence i remember uh my my gmail was like getting hacked at that moment and i was like in a cold sweat in the elevator oh and, yes like, change all my passwords but then i just like had a moment of peace and i it was still and i just enjoyed her presence wait can i say something to you i remember it now because i remember how stressed you were about that gmail thing i swear to god yeah, yeah, I'm back. 
getting stolen, girl. Now, is that the same party where I remind where I rode in an elevator with Forrest Whitaker and reminded him that I had offered him nuts on a first class flight once when I sat next to him? Was that the same party? I don't think it was that party. That's no. a pity. That's a pity. I yeah, I had a great. Uh, I've had some great celebrity elevator encounters. That was where, um, for I've t- I tell the story at least once a day. Where um, one time I flew in first class with Forrest Whitaker, and he wanted nuts for his Sunday, and I was like three glasses of wine in, and I had my business class nuts, and I went, "You can have my nuts, Forrest," and he was just like, "No thanks." No, thank you. <laughs> he was like not interested. And then we were nose to nose in an elevator, like a packed elevator after some party, also like down in meatpacking, who knows? And we were like basically touching lips. And I was just like, do you remember when I offered you my nuts on that flight? And he literally was like, ma'am, get away from me. Listen, you can't say that I don't shoot my shot. I don't care if it's the King of Scotland or the great Cecily Tyson. I'm always going to put my energy out there and hope for the best. Um, Shotgun gets none, man. You got you to gotta go for the goals. Hold that's so true. Wait, Greg, can I, um, I might call you later just to catch up because I really miss you. Yes, I would love that. Oh, all right. Well, give it up. Greggy, tell your, um, your Instagram and uh, Twitter so people can follow you. Yeah, guys, follow me. Greggy Bennett. Um, that's where I'm at all over the internet and so funny and so viral. I feel like lately you've really been hitting some viral gold. So congrats. Here and there. Here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, I love you so much. I'm going to text you later. All right. Sounds good. Bye Greg. Bye. And you know what? I think we should call it an episode and, and wait for part two. So let's go to, uh, let's not go to break. Let's say, you know what? I think that was a good episode one. I think we're going to make yeah. it work without a guest. You know what? Right, Dan? Yeah, I think that was fun. Dan is checking work email. You know how I know? Because his eyes have mattified. (laughs) What are you doing over there, Dan? Um, mm, All right. We're uh, going to call it an episode. Guys, this has been Midnight Snack. Part two will be out Thursday. Um, I know that we, it might be old. I do have some thoughts about the anything but tuna fiasco, which I, I can't get over that subway fiasco. I know by next Thursday, they're going to have proved they're going to find like scales in a, you know, whole week foot long to prove that it's tuna. But, um, we are going to go follow Dan Acton at Dan underscore Acton. Um, he has a lot of fans. Dan really has a lot of midnight snackers hoping to snack <laughs> on him. Uh, you can also follow him at Mask Motel um, if you want a little case for your, your masks. They're really cute. I know they're yeah. doing very well. Did you sell out? Uh, not yet. But not uh, yet. I have the yeah, I have a new color coming up. So. Ooh, what color? Um, it's kind of it's kind of this color, actually. It's <gasps> kind of like a turquoisey blue. I just want you to know that I said what color and without even flinching, he was holding a fabric swatch in his hand. I mean, that was like <laughs> without even wasting a moment, you go this color, like from below the screen. So that was just incredible. I'm Michelle Collins. Um, thank you for listening. If you love the podcast, I ask you to tell your friends. I love reading the reviews. I actually really enjoy the reviews are we have very smart listeners is what I will say. Cause the reviews always make me laugh. Like the people who find us funny are funny. And I feel like that's oh, the funny. greatest testament to what we do here so guys thank you for listening review if you can um we'll be back on thursday we'll have a little more uh, nonsense for you follow me at mish call on instagram and twitter and tiktok even though i don't post uh all right have a great week This has been a Forever Dog production. Midnight Snack with Michelle Collins is executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Produced by Tracy Soren. Original theme music by Gabe Lopez. Cover art by Ben Wiseman. To listen to this podcast ad-free, sign up for Forever Dog Plus at foreverdogpodcasts.com slash plus. Check out video clips of our podcasts on YouTube at youtube.com slash team, And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Forever Dog Team to keep up with all the latest Forever Dog news. 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 News.